Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of Vaccines, Friend or Foe, How is a Parent to Decide? I'm your host, Dr. Bob. I'm an internal medicine physician from northern Michigan. I have a strong interest in public health, but I don't do vaccinations personally. I am, however, a vaccinated father of vaccinated children. In our first episode, we went over vaccinations for some of the more serious diseases. In our second episode, we went over more of the common diseases such as measles, mumps, rubella, and pertussis, which, although less serious than, say, smallpox, are very much more common and do have very significant complications. Our episode today is going to deal with some of the optional vaccines to reduce risk and travel vaccines. I like to start each episode by putting up the vaccination schedules that are recommended by the Centers for Disease Control. Uh, this is the schedule for children ages birth to six. Here's the schedule for teenagers. Uh, two of the more important ones here would be rubella for girls and meningitis. We're also going to go over the Gardasil vaccine for human papillomavirus. And finally, here's the vaccination schedule for adults. Important in this group include tetanus, pneumonia, and shingles. Now let's just uh, do a quick overview on how vaccines work again. Vaccines work by introducing a substance to the body that fools the body into thinking it's got an infection. This mounts an re immune response in the production of antibodies. Once these antibodies are produced, the body sort of hangs on to the blueprint for them. So if it ever sees that substance again, it immediately goes into production rather than gearing up. The goal of this is to prime the body to fight infections. The presence of antibodies reduce but don't eliminate the chance that somebody will become infected if they come in contact with an infected individual. The other part of vaccinations is herd immunity. If a large number of the people in the community are vaccinated, there are simply fewer sources of infection to infect the remainder. Vaccination is a public health issue much like hand washing with restaurant workers. The reason for this is the more people that are vaccinated, not only are there fewer people getting sick in the community, there are fewer sick people to uh, infect other people in the community. A high percentage of vaccinated individuals in a community reduce the risk to those individuals that cannot be vaccinated, such as very young children or people with immune issues. Now, as I alluded to at the beginning of this presentation, vaccinations can be grouped into three broad categories. The first category is against the diseases that will simply kill you outright. Examples of this include meningitis, smallpox, polio. The second category is less serious but highly contagious diseases such as measles, pertussis, diphtheria, and mumps. These diseases generally have a pretty benign course However, you can get complications. Approximately 1 in 20 people with measles have complications, and in 2017 worldwide, between 100 and 200,000 people died of these complications, mostly children. Both of these categories were covered in the first two episodes of this series. The subject of this episode is going to be diseases that simply reduce risk and travel-specific vaccinations. Now the first of these is going to be the vaccination against human papillomavirus. Now human papillomavirus is a sexually transmitted disease. It causes genital and anal warts. However, it increases your risk of genital cancer. And it's recommended that you be vaccinated against this between ages 11 and 12. While these vaccinations are not required to go to school, they are simply highly recommended as reducing the risk of cervical cancer in, in women and penile cancer in men. These are things that can easily be prevented uh, with this vaccination, and there's really no reason not to get it. Now, like many people in my age group, I had chicken pox as a child. This is a very common childhood disease. It's miserable. It takes a week or two to get over. It takes uh, parents' time off of work to care for children with chicken pox. One of the big problems that you're going to run into is that there are indeed complications of this virus, including encephalopathy. And while not common, 
uh, it is pretty devastating if you're the one that gets it. The other problem that you run into with chicken pox is it can lead to shingles later in life. So the recommendation is to be vaccinated against chicken pox at age 12 months and you can always get a chicken pox shot or a varicella vaccine when you are an adult. Unfortunately, if you do have chicken pox as a child, that virus lives in your spinal cord and tends to migrate out on the spinal nerves periodically, especially during times of stress in your life, resulting in shingles outbreaks. Shingles is an extraordinarily uncomfortable uh, condition and it can be very uh, life limiting in respect to quality of the life. So parents resist the urge to go to chicken pox parties. Uh, these were pretty popular when I was growing up. We do have a better way of addressing chicken pox now and that's with this vaccination. Now the final issue that I want to address in this video is travel specific vaccinations. The CDC publishes guidelines that are in general and for destination specific recommendations. I will put a link in the description of this video to that site in case you're planning on any foreign travel. Here is a screenshot of one of the pages from that website. As you can see, uh, hepatitis is a big one, typhoid, cholera, yellow fever, Japanese encephalitis. In addition to vaccinations, this page has information on recommended uh, prophylaxis for going to certain locations. For example, there are medications that you can take to prevent malaria. You also may want to go on antibiotics in case you go into an area that travelers' diarrhea is endemic. All in all, if you're planning on any international travel, you might want to have a look at this page and discuss it with your doctor. I would, however, recommend that you print the page off and bring it with you because these are not very common diseases that are handled by general practitioners. Now, I hope that you found this video helpful. In our next episode, we're going to hit two things. The first is going to be the expected and routine complications of vaccinations. There are things that we do look for when we vaccinate people, and sometimes we actually change some of our recommendations. For example, when polio was eradicated from the Western Hemisphere, we got rid of the oral polio vaccination and went to the injectable one. This is because there was a risk, even albeit a microscopic one, of the live virus oral vaccine. And we decided that since polio was not present in the Western Hemisphere anymore, we didn't even want to take the risk of, of that. So we just went to the killed vaccine. In addition to these real complications of vaccination, I'm going to address some of the imaginary ones, such as the link between vaccination and autism and the fear that is being spread on the online community about vaccinations by people that quote unquote do their own research but unfortunately can't cite anything from any sort of a re reputable peer-reviewed medical journal. As a direct result of this internet rumor mill we are actually seeing outbreaks of measles and pertussis in communities that were scared out of being vaccinated by these groups. I'm hoping that by going over some of the evidence both for and against these associations, parents can approach this from a standpoint of an educated consumer when deciding on what to do with their children. So once again, let's go ahead and put these vaccination schedules up. If you need to look at them a little closer, just stop the video for a moment at the one that you have some concerns about and just go over them. Again, here's the schedule for teenagers. I do want to stress meningitis, the human papillomavirus vaccination, and rubella. This is also a good time to go over the childhood vaccination history and make sure that you're caught up on everything. Finally, here is the adult vaccination schedule. The main ones here would include the shingles vaccine and the pneumonia shot especially for people with immunocompromised or other chronic illnesses. Now before I go, I want to talk about a new series that I've started. It's called Let's Talk About Things with Dr. Bob. In this, I'm going to try and address some common illnesses, uh, the first one being diabetes later on this week. We're going to go over the cause of the disease, the natural history of it, 
signs, symptoms, complications. Then we're going to talk about monitoring and treatment. It's basically going to be 15 minutes of a conversation between you and I about your condition, something that you probably are not getting very often in your primary care practices due to time constraints and schedules. It seems to me that medicine has become too impersonal in the last 35 years, and this is my effort to try and add a little bit more of the personal touch to it again. So please take a moment and stop by that my channel, like and subscribe, and have a look at this new series.